What's up, everybody? Welcome to the round 22 review. Carlton, Port Adelaide. At Adelaide Oval, the Blues go down five goals, 15-45. To the power, 21-14-140. A 95-point thumping at the hands of the power. Um, yeah, really, really difficult to front up and, and, uh, and explain anything about that. Not that I'm going to try to, but, but, um, just more, more pain, more suffering, more, just more of it, uh, more of a reminder that, we're just nowhere near it, nowhere near a premiership, a <laughs> premiership, how can I even say that word? And um, more pain, it's, it's, uh, it's more pain, you know, obviously we, where, where, where does one start with documenting how one feels about this? Um, what a melting pot of a week. Yeah, like the Sam Doherty news, terrible news. Make no mistake, Monday was was that was terrible to hear, and obviously thoughts and and prayers go out with Doc. Um, then we move to the you know the injury report on the Monday as well, where we we knew that Harry wasn't going to be playing. He was he had the the sore shoulder. Um, we knew, yeah, we, we we didn't know anything about Liam Jones, Jack Silvani, or Paddy Cripps at that stage. Or, and then we, we move on to Tuesday. We get the news about, um, I think how we get the news about Harry and he's, and he's definitely out for the season. And then we get the news about Liam Jones. He's out for the season, not on the injury report, but out for the season. Um, then we get the news about Jack Silvani. Um, he's booked in for surgery. Then we get the news about Jack Martin on the Thursday or the Friday. So he's done a hammy. And then we get told that Zach Williams has aggravated his hammy and he's out. And then we get before the game we get we get news that, that Cripp is gonna miss and, and Durden will play and and then we start there and shout out to Corey Durden, by the way. So happy for him. Um I mean I I, I was it was a very interesting day. I during the day I, I I'm 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 in trying to car compartmentalize how to how to approach games, how to think about games. I had a pretty clear understanding that we weren't going to win the game. I was pretty ready for it. Um, Porter, a good side, especially in Adelaide. It's just, it is what it is. And um, I told myself to move my attention to I mean, very, very young fragile group there a lot of you know youngsters a couple of debutantes and you know naturally with that you've, you've got to you know sort of carry them a bit but that's rubbish they hold their own I, I i just sort of said to myself all right um just look at the youngsters watch them don't bring the the trauma of the past and and lump it onto kemp and durden and and walsh and these and these kids don't, don't don't lump it onto them. It's it's not their fault. It, it's you know, it's barely any of the players' fault. I mean, they 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 want to play footy. They go out there and again, I talk a lot about what is the environment in which they are allowed to, and what are the confines of the environment in which they are allowed to operate. Um, and it's so difficult because all we watch is the players, and therefore they're the ones that we take it out on. You know. In in a sense, and they do they do carry a responsibility. Don't get me wrong; they absolutely have a responsibility. Um, but I didn't want to just lash out at them. I'm I'm really big on this. This is a club thing. And anyway, to be fair, I don't know about you guys. I was wrapped with. I, I honestly, I was wrapped with what I saw in the first quarter. Let's say the first quarter and a half. I, I, I honestly, cause I, I wasn't expecting to win, but I was you know expecting an effort and. We absolutely got that. We, we absolutely got that from them. I mean, you see the kids, you see Durden running, you see Durden cracking in and, and hitting Bokes. You see Honey with his 
I don't know what what he was on. He was he was he was exciting. It was it was great, and you can't help but be excited. And you see the smiles on their faces, and you see their energy, and it was fantastic. I, I thought the focus was on. You know, they were, especially in that first quarter, we were focusing, uh, working hard. Laid the nineteen tackles in the quarter. Um, we're out in space. We're closing space defensively. Um, I think the honey goal from the dirt and crumb was was uh, was just super exciting, and then and then the series of events starts, and um, you know I start. Let's just sort of go through it. Let think about this after the Corey Durden handball to Josh Honey for the goal. We go into you know one goal against two goals, three goals. David, pick the phone up. Four goals, five goals. David, da- David, pick the phone up. Pick, pick the phone up. Pick the phone up, mate. We start getting to the five goal swing. Six goals. David, pick the phone up. Seven, eight. What I'm hoping to bring to the Blues is um, uh, nine. You know, really set high standards for the players. Um, David, David, pick the phone up. David, pick the fucking phone up, there. And the staff, and really work hard on, on creating elite habits in the players. Um, 10, 11. Dave, Dave, the phone. The phone, mate. Dave, the, Dave, the phone, the phone. Pick the fucking phone up, David. David. 12. Quite simply, he could not be more ready to coach. 13, 14. Am I like I pick the fucking phone up, mate? 15. Over there and have a look at that, you fucking idiot! Go on, go over and have a look, dickhead! You what a fucking yoke! Sixteen. David, pick the phone up, mate. Seventeen. What an idiot, man! Oh, what's oh, this? Fuck it up. What are you doing, David? Eighteen. Nineteen unanswered goals. I said we don't have the capacity. <laughs> 19 in a row. It's time to go! And and then all that pre-game um, compartmentalization had just gone out. Like, I tried. I tried to bring myself a little bit down just to maybe protect myself, maybe to have a little bit of perspective on who was out there and who was available and, and to just sort of quell my unfair expectations and I just still ended up being completely demoralized. That's that's that, that's demoralizing. You know, I watched Hawthorne earlier in the day. They have lost all of their best players. They lose O'Meara before the bounce, and you just watch. They they never let the Western Bulldogs into the game, and I like. You know, the way they were set, the way they were coached, the moves that were made, it, it was fascinating. And you, you watch our coach and uh, is it unfair? Am I am I reading the body language a little unfairly? Is it unfair to expect more from the coach? Um, was this coming? Was this part of, the, was this the culmination of the external review that has seeped in and the players have just held on as long as possible and then you know the damn wall was always going to break is that just what this is do i just accept that as a fan as a member is that is that how it is uh, you, you know thank goodness thank goodness for fan cams thank goodness cuz i i uh i was exhausted i i did them to exhaustion <laughs> So that way, when I finished, I was so tired that I couldn't think, and then slept and just passed out. But it's like, what, what are they doing to us? Like, what the fuck? You know, the, you know what the scary part is. Mark Murphy played his last game. He entered the club that was losing by ninety, ninety-five. Those kind of losses, we were getting them all the time. He leaves the club on a ninety-five point loss. Like it's it's crazy, crazy. It's absolutely crazy, and this is not a shot at him. Um, too many supporters are doing that. Um, 
because he, he the game has gone past Mark Murphy. I think we can all agree on that. It's gone past him. But the fact that he was able to find something yesterday and and really, you know, lift and, you know, give it one last hurrah and, and you know, 24 touches and worked hard and, you know, laid five tackles. Like, the fact that he was able to find something, it's crazy to me that some of the others weren't able to find something else. And I, I don't know, like... <clears throat> I'm I'm so, so demoralized by that yesterday. Like, um, the crazy part is we've got another week. Another week, the Giants are absolutely humming as well. You know, I I just, I don't even know, I don't know how to absorb it. I don't know what to say next. You know, we've got a lot going on at the moment. You know, there's so much dysfunction. Um, so much dysfunction. We've got seemingly individual interests being put at the forefront as opposed to club interests and member interests. And what I mean by that is this review, the one that, you know, after we kicked up a storm and we were told, hold on, we're going to do an external review. Don't worry. We're going to get the best people to have a look at the situation unbiased because this is not good enough. The Carlton Football Club exists to win premierships. We're going to review the whole department and then we're going to fix this. And then to have this review not be revealed to the public in fear of, you know, reputations. Fuck reputations, mate. Because these reputations, like I have to sit through and watch them play. I have to watch that. You know, these these people, these employees will come, they will go, they might go to another club, they might go to another sport. They might go to another industry. But me and my kids and their kids will remain constant throughout. You know? because we, and, and again, because we're afraid of hurting people's feelings. You know? And I'm not asking people... I'm not asking for this review to personally scapegoat individuals. What I'm asking is a summary... A summary of the shortcomings and a plan of what we are going to do to fix these shortcomings. It's as simple as that. That's what I, I don't think that's unreasonable um, at all, at all. And, you know, we have a, we have a president who's unwilling to, to do that at the moment. We have a new president that's going to come in. I don't know what he's like. Um, I don't, I, I don't know, but the silence is deafening. The silence is deafening from the uh, the decision makers. The silence is deafening from from you know our administrators. It's deafening. It's crazy. We live in 2021, and I can't see them behind a fucking camera. It's 2021. Yeah, we're in the digital age. It's 2021. We can't go to games. We can't go to the VFL and get that personal touch and. And network, we can't go to functions, and I can't see my board. I can't see them. Um, no, you know this EGM. Like we are in a situation where an EGM to spill the board has been proposed with no plan. Just spill the board. Just go. Just spill the board, and that's actually going to be okay with people. And the club have nobody to blame but themselves. The silence is deafening. The lack of accountability is deafening. It's sickening. And it's... And I've had enough. Like, I've, I've just... Like... I, just just crazy. Crazy. Like, when? 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 When is it going to end? You know? I just don't get it. I just don't get it. <clears throat> We're doing the cycle all over again. Murphy, Gibbs, Cruiser, Judd. The era is gone. We move into a new era. We're into the, you know, the weedering Mackay, Cripps era, Walsh era. And we move into that one now, which is exciting, obviously. It's, it's a big change. It's a new era. Um, when you look at all the teams that have rebuilt, you look at the way they started. They started with senior players who had, you know, previous 
you know, premiership or winning experience. Um, you know, I think I think we need to start looking at, at things like that. I, I just, you know, the, the group is not, we don't have anybody in this group who the younger guys can draw inspiration from in terms of what it what it takes to win premierships. They just don't have any seniority like that. Like at the moment, you look at the list, Doherty, Cripps are going to be the senior guys who lead the way, Ed Kerno as well, but th- these guys don't know any better. These guys don't know any better and that's that's the dichotomy of what's going on. Like there's just the chicken and the egg. We're always behind because we don't know any better. No one in there knows any better apart from like Luke Power. Um, so the football department is a mess. Um, and, I, and I guess, you know, it's seeping in. I mean, we're, we're the fans. We see what's going on. I'm sure the players... Can you imagine? Can you imagine playing, being a, being a part of the club? Can you imagine what, what they're seeing? They're not idiots, you know? And that's probably part of it as well. You know, there's this function. There's, you've got this review. You've got people's careers on the line. You know that most, if not all, of the people that coach you won't be there. Like, do you trust them anyway? Do you believe in their game plan from the outset anyway? And it just shows. Again byproduct of what the environment is is what I see out there on the field and you know what do you say I don't know the player of the game I thought it was Matt Kennedy isn't it fascinating what a little tough love does don't be scared of it tough love's good for you love doesn't have to be all um, you know sunshine and lollipops and positive reinforcement you know the best love that i ever received in my life 100 percent, the best love that i ever received in my life was the harsh lessons the things that like i didn't want to do at the time or i didn't want to hear at the time they're the best lessons i ever learned and um i think kennedy there's, there's something to say for the i mean it's a little it's, it's been harsh on him you know he's been on the rookie list he just withering away in the twos just you know and then finally gets his chance and he fucking bangs the door down and look at him now um he had 28 touches led the team with seven tackles which was the equal most with um with zach fisher who also had seven kicked a goal eight marks ran hard worked hard played you know the right way and so i'll give it to him um congratulations to my boy mark murphy on on a great career that's crazy it's a new era uh, I'm not sad. Uh, I like change. I like evolution. I, I think evolving is important. If you don't evolve, you fall behind. You must keep evolving. And um, he's definitely given service to the club. We can now look back and appreciate him and and move forward from there. We're into the new era. Crazy, but um, it's a sign that I'm experiencing life to see, to see a whole generation come and go. So look forward to... Um, I look forward to what's going to happen next. What about you? How are you going? Where are you at? Um, talk to me about your feelings. A lot of you came on the fan cams last night. It was really good to have that session with you. Um, if you didn't get a chance to come on, share with me what you're feeling this morning after a, after a sleep or two, depending on when you're watching this. And and we'll, we'll pick it apart from there. Go the Mighty Blues. <laughs>